Good morning. Yesterday was one of the roughest days we've ever had on the homestead. If we were going to quit, yesterday would have been the day we would have quit. We lost our bull cow, George. We still have Miles. Freak accident. If you guys want, I'll leave the link to that video down below. I won't get all into it here. But we've been planning on putting in water line from our water spigot there down to the barn. I wanted to do it last year, but last year was a very rainy and wet year. And every time I dig a trench on a rainy kind of year, it rains and our trench gets full of water. So I didn't do that last year. Well, right now, starting yesterday, we have a nice stretch of dry weather. And I was going to plan on starting that yesterday, but I didn't. I got all the supplies. So today we're gonna start trenching in. We gotta run water lines over from there to the barn and then to the front of the barn. And I have a special winter setup I wanna start building so we can have water over here that won't freeze and will stay running for the cows. And then I'm thinking about also adding another shutoff down by where Miles is. So that way we can have a shutoff over there in the winter time. We're using frost free hydrants. So hopefully it doesn't rain because usually what ends up happening when I start digging a trench, we get a lot of rain. So fingers crossed we can get this project done before we get rain. So we have a gravity fed spring system that feeds the livestock out here. And I'm gonna have to fill up their waters so that way we can shut off the underground system and not be flooding out the fields because I don't have a shut off per se at every spigot. We're gonna have to shut it off up above and make sure we get all the water out of the lines. Otherwise, we're gonna have a mess. So let's get these water troughs filled up so that way they have plenty of water. That's the hydrant we're gonna tie into over there. And then we have one more over there and the spring is up there. So when I did all these water lines, I left a longer tail on that hydrant but for some reason when that hydrant's left on for a while you see water coming out of the ground so we're gonna dig up that hydrant and figure out what the issue is I'm not sure if it's the hydrant itself or if there's a leak somewhere else but it's only when the hydrant is on which is a good thing I'd rather have it leaking when it's on because we don't leave it on all the time only when we're using it I had to move pasture because where we had Azalea and Cookie the other day, I'm gonna be digging through that area a little bit and they had eaten that down pretty good. So we're setting them up today over here, right next to Miles. This way I'm hoping that they can get to know each other through the fence and see how that goes. We're gonna be working right in the area today so we can keep an eye on them. All right, our water shutoff is down here. This is natural spring water, so it is cold. If I knew then what I know now, I would have put in a curbside shutoff, but I didn't know about those back then, so I didn't. Curbside shutoff is like what they use in sidewalks. It goes down as deep as your water line is and it shuts the water line off underground. I would have put those one of those in over here, but no, I did not do that. So now I gotta see how deep this is. Think about getting in there and plugging it, or I need to pump this out to get the water out of it. Oh, perfect fit. I like it. That way I can get out easy peasy. All right, so far things are looking promising. I just figure I'd rather keep water in the tank than have to empty it all the way out or empty it out. All right, even though I got waders on, it's still gonna be cold. All right, Ooh, where is that? That's way in there. Hmm, that's cold, that's for sure. All right, on second hands, it's gonna be a lot easier just to pump this out. So let me shut off the fill valve and then I'll go get our pump. 
pump that we have. I'll pump this out so it's below the fill up line. Cause that water's cold and I really don't feel like taking a bath. If I'm gonna get that plugged, I'm gonna have to take my waders off and just be in there in shorts and a t-shirt and it's about 50 degrees out right now. So I'm gonna see if we can do it with the pump. All right, I think this pump will be the smarter way to do this. All right, this pump should at least keep me from getting so cold. Put that in the bottom. That right there is the outlet. Now we should be able to go down below and start working. We don't gotta worry about having a bunch of water in the lines. We'll have however much water is in the lines from here down to there. We probably have a decent amount because we probably got three or 400 feet of inch and a quarter PVC black pipe underground. However many gallons that holds is what's in the system right now. All right, before we start digging, better fuel this up so we don't run out. All right, she's full. All right, let me drain as much water out of this as I can. Our hydrants, we gotta go four feet deep. So all of our water lines are at least four feet deep. So I'm gonna dig this out and find it. Our frost line's four feet deep. So that's why we're so deep here. But this has been so nice having running water out to the pastures like this year round. I am kind of surprised with how much water is coming out of there. Miles, you got a little something something on you, mister. All right, so we originally put this hydrant here thinking that this is a flat area that maybe one day we would have built a bigger barn here. So we have this hydrant here and then somewhere down here we have a tail. Me and Gina were just talking, we're most likely going to omit this hydrant, run the line that way and run a line this way. And we're gonna put this hydrant down over at the water trough. So if we're using this area again in the winter, we can just fill the trough up right from the hydrant and we don't have to run a hose in the middle of winter, which is the pain. And then we're gonna run one, and we're gonna put another hydrant like halfway down the pasture. And then we're gonna put one on the other side of the gate. I have a special setup I wanna do for a winter time so it doesn't freeze the troughs. And then we're gonna do one over on the front of the barn by the workshop so we can have water on that side also. And then we might do another one over here. We'll just see how the digging goes. Pluto is getting older now, and the older she's gotten is the fussier she's gotten with food. And we were having problems finding food that she really liked to eat. And she loves her farmer's dog, dog food. So I wanna thank Farmer's Dog for sponsoring today's video. Farmer's Dog has made it so Pluto looks forward to eating her meal twice a day, every day, and she can't wait to eat it. It makes us feel good too because we know she's getting a good nutritionally dense food for her, especially at the age she is. Pluto is 13, so she is getting up there and she is still good and healthy and she loves her food. You ready for your farmer's dog? Yeah, you want it, huh? So farmer's dog delivers nutritionally balanced and fresh human grade food for dogs. You go on their website, you fill out their questionnaire, you tell them all about your dog, and they make a special blend just for your dog. This one is labeled for Pluto. It gets shipped right to our house. It is frozen. We keep it in the freezer and we take one out in a day in advance. It is so much more convenient than having to get dry dog food all the time. The best part is Pluto loves it. She eats it up. Huh. That's the best stuff you've had, isn't it? 
If you wanna try Farmer's Dog, click our link down below or scan this QR code right here and Farmer's Dog is offering you 50% off your first order of Farmer's Dog. Pluto loves it and she thinks your dogs won't be disappointed either. She's had their chicken, their turkey, and their beef and she hasn't been disappointed at all. Thanks Farmer's Dog for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get on with the project. All right, I found something. Sure it's did. Filling up with water, and this would have been the end cap I had on. And there's the tail end of the hose. So I'll dig that out a little bit better. I don't know what was leaking over here. Because if you left this hydrant on for a while, you'd see bubblings coming up out of the ground. So I don't know. I'm assuming it has to be that hydrant's junk. So right here is our T. So now I can just dig this back a little bit, get in there. Actually, you know what I should do now is I should set up the excavator that way, start digging my trench this way, and then I can come in here and I can start going that way. All right, let's see how deep we are. So to the, yeah, we're five feet here. Now that we have that part done, I should be able to just dig for quite a while all the way back to the fence before I have to really do anything. I'm gonna have to take down the electrical fence over there just for a little while so I can get to the other side and then I wanna dig another trench and yeah, you'll see when I get there. I will say, I am a little jealous of all you Southerners who can dig like six inches deep and put your water lines like jason from solo land he just did a whole bunch of trenching with a trencher i think it took him like an hour to do over three feet yeah ours, ours isn't going to be that quick we have all these rocks and then we got to go four feet deep so yeah i would say you guys are lucky all right let's get this trenching party started So far we've hit a few good rocks, but I got something right here. It's pretty big. I'm hoping I can get this one because all the other ones I've been able to get. I guess this one we're gonna find out in a minute. Got it. All right, this thing has a quick connect bucket on it and I just noticed it was swinging and not emptying. The pin fell out. So now we're gonna see if we can find the pin. It shouldn't be too far. <sighs> Right there, perfect. It looks like we're missing one of the finger pins on that end. That must be how it slid out. 
I was digging and all of a sudden the bucket was just flopping around. This pin I've taken out a couple of times, put different attachments on, and it never comes out easy. But when you don't want it to come out, it just falls out on you. There we go. Let's see if the pin will go in or if we need a hammer. Yes. I always try to keep spare pins around because you never know when you're going to need them. I think that one will be long enough. I have one that's a little longer. I'll bring them both and we'll use the one we need. Let me get a little hammer now so we can knock the pin in the rest of the way. This will have to do. Perfect. All right, that'll do. That's not too bad, that could have been a lot worse. About a five minute fix. I'll take it. I got almost to the fence line yesterday. I'm probably like 30 feet from it and I had to stop because I wanted to run out to the plumbing supply store and pick up some more supplies. We kind of changed up a little bit how we're going to be doing this from when I originally planned it. Like we said yesterday, we're going to omit this hydrant, put a hydrant down there. So I'm going to need a T, so I didn't have any T, that I pick up a T for that. And then we're going to run down that way again. So I got two stainless steel T's, so we got a T for there and a T for there. Well, that filled up with water. Bummer. We got a few good sized rocks yesterday. We have some rocks, decent size. And then we got, I don't know, there's three there. There's two more there, one there, at least six big rocks. And there's some on the other side. So we got into some big rocks. Digging will go good and easy. And then all of a sudden we'll hit a clump of big rocks that are hard to get out. So it slows me down, but we're getting there. Digging here is definitely slower and you wouldn't do it without a mini excavator. <laughs> I am so thankful that we have this. Sure. It's showing cold. It was 38 degrees out this morning, so the excavator is showing cold. It's just beep saying that it's warmed up. But I'm hot now, but yeah, it was chilly this morning. I'm really hitting the big old rock jackpot today. Sheesh. All right, I have this fence shut off for now. I'm gonna run a temporary wire from our energizer over to that side. So I'm gonna disconnect everything over here and then nothing will be getting energized. I'll take this part of the fence out and I'll have to redo it. We gotta make sure when I come down with my excavator, we don't hit this post. I was gonna do my branches first and then come in here but it's gonna be easier for me to come in here, get all this digging done, then go out, do my branches, and then I can run my lines. I got company watching me. Cookie and Azalea are very amused at what I am doing over here. They've been keeping an eye on me, especially Cookie. So I'm um, just past the barn. This has been really hard digging right in here. This is really compact soil, which is good because that's where we built the barn and the workshop on top of. So I'm gonna come down over here now and I wanna dig and put a hydrant right in this area right here. So it's close to the man door and it's also close to this other stall door. And it's also fairly close to the workshop. So if we wanna do any power washing, bam, we have water here. And then I'll leave a 10 foot step that way. 
So if for some reason in the future I want to put water to the workshop, we can get it off of this area. Am I keeping you entertained, Cookie? All right, boy, do I have a mess and a quite a lot of dirt all over the place. I just gotta clean up this going back this way now. I cleaned it up going this way and then I caved in on this side so I can clean that up and then we can go back out there and do the branches. But first, we gotta fix this little leak we got going on. We're leaking right there pretty good. So I'm hoping that's just a loose fitting. So we're gonna find out. You can see right here, that's from that fitting leaking. This should do the trick, hopefully. I am hopeful that this fitting just loosened up from vibrating. We're gonna find out. Cause it's right here where it's leaking. Let's see. And of course, oh, yeah, it's definitely loose. Nice. I'm hoping I can do it without having to take this cover off. I mean, it's not a big deal, but. There we go. Definitely loose. Let's start that up and see if the drip's gone. Awesome, that took care of that leak. I like it when it's just a loose fitting. All right, now we gotta start digging the branch from here down to just this side of this pasture. We're gonna go to the third to last T post down there. And then if we need to, we can fill up water over here with it. And we can also have access to water in this pasture. This is usually where I run meat birds. So it'd be nice to have a hydrant over here for watering the meat birds. And then there'll be one over there. All right, so far I feel like I started the wrong area for that branch to go down because I must have dug out at least 10 good sized rocks in the first eight feet. So hopefully it gets better the further we go because if not, it's gonna take a while to dig. We didn't quite make it as far as I was wanted to at first, but it is pretty rocky over here. And the further down I go, the rockier it gets. So we're gonna stop about 10 feet short because I'm making a huge mess. And if I go 10 more feet, I'm probably gonna make even a bigger mess and 10 feet's really not that big of a deal. So we're gonna stop here and call this good. And go over, do the other branch down. Hopefully that one's not like this because this one was rough. I don't even wanna think about what it's gonna be like cleaning up this mess. I'm assuming there was a little bit of water left in that water line and it came out overnight. So I'm going to dig the ditch down. It's downhill so the water should slowly go down and then hopefully it won't be too muddy when it's time to start building the water lines. that entertaining to watch miles well we got all the digging done that is a good thing it was pretty bony over here too <laughs> look at all these rocks that's all big rocks on that side my future self who's going to be picking up this mess putting in the water lines is not gonna be happy but my future future self who's gonna be using these frost free hydrants in the middle of winter to water my animals is going to be very happy so my future self I'm sorry, you're not gonna be happy, but my future, future self, you're welcome. It's gonna be worth it. So as you can see, we have a lot of trenches dug. So now we can go ahead and stop putting in our lines. We're gonna go up to that 
the hydrant up there. We'll take that one out, put a T in, and then we'll start running our lines that way and this way. And yeah, I am looking forward to having running water all over the farm. All right, I got a T barb fitting, a bunch of tools, some clamps. I have brass fittings for hooking up our hydrants and then a bunch of barbs that'll go into that. So we have lots of parts and pieces we need to build. All right, now I gotta cut this off. Bam. I don't dare reuse this hydrant. Cause like I said earlier, when we would leave that on, like here, it would look like a natural spring bubbling out of the ground. So it's gotta have some sort of leak in it. I'm not sure what, but. Now we gotta roll out two lines because we're gonna have a T here. We'll roll out a line going that way. We'll have to use a 200 foot roll and then we'll roll out a 100 foot line going this way. All right, this is a fun part too, is rolling out the line. So where is the end? It's this way, so we gotta flop it. I'm thinking this one's gonna be the hardest one to hook up because we're stuck there. I really fitting our line will be loose when we're working with them. This one, we're gonna be there, so we have to work it where we are. And I'm gonna put two clamps on each end. All right, I'm gonna stick everything in a five gallon bucket so that way we're not losing it in mud. I'm gonna heat this up just a little bit. So this is how the well company did the water line underground to our house too. It's just inch and a quarter line fittings and two clamps per line. There we go. Got it. Woo. Forgot to put the clamps on. They're right here. I was kidding. That fitting is done. I just dug it down there a little bit deeper, like six more inches, so I can put some blue stone and have a good place for the hydrant to bleed for the hydrant to drain. So when you, these hydrants, when you turn them on and off, it shuts off down like four feet below the ground. So when you shut it off, it drains that pipe all the way back into the ground. So you gotta have stone in the ground. So that way it has a place for the water to drain to. So we get the stone, we'll get that dumped in. Then I'll hook up a hydrant to one of those T's. Right. Height wise, that is like perfect. All right, I got my second hydrant installed. This one's kind of in the middle of the pasture. So I'm gonna have the animals out. We'll have one, so it'll make it easier for having the animals over here in pasture. So when they're out all around different pasture, we can run a hose from this area. It'll kind of cut hose length down quite a bit. I figured we're already over here, putting in water line, I might as well add a hydrant. So now we gotta go that way, put a T in, run down 
that way, put another hydrant in, and then we have two more that way. So we're getting there. I got our T-Ran down to our hydrant over here. Got the line out, we just gotta go down there, cut the line to length. And then we'll need the line down there. It'll feel nice. Once this one's done, we only gotta go to the barn. All right, we're down to the last two hydrants. One over there, which will be the winter hydrant. I got a setup idea for that. And then we're gonna do one right more over there. Those are the last two. Then we can put water in it and see if we have any leaks or not. Gonna use up just about all 500 feet. Sheesh. All right, last one is in. Now we just gotta bleed the air lines, or the water lines, I should say, get all the air out of the water lines, and then backfill everything, as long as there's no leaks. This is where we're gonna end this video. I'm gonna go in and have some dinner. I am hungry. It's a lot later than I thought it was going to be, but it is done. So tomorrow, we'll get water in the system, check for leaks, and if everything is good, we can start backfilling all of our trenches. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe. We'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.